impact. That club face is going to create a Y with your body and your arms. This muscle You're works to lower the best your athlete in the world. Then. We are charting a new course for golf. It's time for Inside Golf. And hi again, everybody. Welcome to Inside Golf with Colleen Wolf. I'm Harry Donahue. First of all, at the top, happy holidays to everybody. That's as we right. Get ready to celebrate Christmas. And the weather's been a little cold around here. So, what do you say we spend the next 30 minutes in Bradenton, Florida? Sounds like a good idea. Yes, that's my answer. And Absolutely. it is a beautiful place to go any time of the year. And this week, we're going to take a look at the Concession Club. In fact, we're going to find out a little history, where the name came from. It was a very special moment in Ryder Cup history and a lot of other things going on at the concession club. That's right. And not only are we going to go down there and take a look at the beautiful course, but five teams from right around the area just had a chance to go down there, early Christmas present, and compete in the concession cup. We'll let you know who won that cup. Yeah, exciting competition. Jimmy Wright is our guest. We'll be back with Jimmy and look at the concession club of Bradenton, Florida as Inside Golf continues. Inside Golf is brought to you in part by Yingling, America's oldest brewery, and by the Philadelphia Section PGA. To the Duffers, the Hacks, we've been there. To the three and four putters, we learned. And to the Rough Riders and Sam, we're ready to teach you. To everybody out there who thinks they can't play the game, the over 28,000 PGA golf professionals say, we're here to help you discover or rediscover the joys of golf. To you, and you, and you, we're here. The Philadelphia Section PGA is here to teach you. Play golf, Delaware Valley. Hello, uh, I'm Jimmy Wright. I'm the tournament director here and also ambassador for the Concession Golf Club in Bradenton, Florida. And we welcome you here today with us. Uh, we're going to show you a fabulous, fabulous golf course. Welcome back to Inside Golf, a little holiday edition on this week before Christmas. And, you know, we were talking about the Concession Club in Bradenton, Florida, which is where we're going to be headed in just a few moments. And I'm always interested, Colleen, into where they came up with the names for golf courses. It's a relatively new course five or six years old, beautiful area in Florida, but how did they come up with the name? And I know you can give us a clue. And you know what? I can. I can give you three clues. Jack Nicklaus, Tony Jacklin, and the Ryder Cup. And here's Jimmy Wright with the full explanation. We have a very unusual name called the Concession. And where we got the name from, it was from the 1969 Ryder Cup match at Royal Burkdale, uh, coming to the last hole of the event. Tony Jacklin and Jack Nicklaus are paired against each other. The score is tied between uh, Europe and uh, the U.S. and it came down to the last hole and Jacklin and Nicklaus are tied. And on the last hole, Nicklaus made a four-foot putt for a par and Jacklin had a two-foot putt for his par and Jack reached down and picked up his mark handed it to Tony and conceded the putt, uh, which gave the first tie in Ryder Cup history. And from that sportsmanship, act of sportsmanship, is where we got the name, the concession. And from that conceded putt that day, uh, Jacqueline and Nicholas became very, very good friends. And it was always Tony's dream from that day on that someday maybe he could be involved in a golf course and name it the concession. So uh, Tony came to Florida, and when he heard that there was going to be a golf course built here in the Bradenton area, he contacted the developer, told him the story about the Ryder Cup match in 1969 and his dream of being involved in a course where they could basically immortalize that particular moment. And so this came out to a Jack Nicklaus signature golf course in, in conjunction with Tony Jacklin and they, again Jack conceded to Tony to have one more concession and that's how the Concession Golf Club came into existence. The connection with Tony and Jack is, is in the story. Uh, Tony living locally, living on the course, on the property is something that's unique, having a designer not just a celebrity, not just a, a major figure in golf history at the course, but, but actually being the designer as well. Uh, additionally, Paul Weisinger is, is, of course, on a regular basis, which is 
very big piece of recent Ryder Cup history. Uh, Jack doesn't visit as often. He lives on the other coast of Florida, but, but he has uh, engaged with the course. And kind of nice to have a few living legends walking around. The people who had the vision of the course, the people who had the, the historical moment, and still have the, the excitement about the, the facility today. The golf course, is, it speaks for itself. They've done everything right. Uh, from construction to uh, the piece of property they cho chose, Mr. Nicholas and Mr. Jacklin uh, put together uh, what we feel is uh, one of Jack's finest works along with Mr. Jacklin that he's ever done. And uh, we, uh, we think the, the people we've entertained here have felt the same. Two things make a great, great golf course, and one of them being you use every club in your bag when you play here at the concession. It's not that you're always hitting long irons or utility woods to the par fours or you're always hitting wedges. You're going to play every club in your bag. And the second thing is, after you play a golf course, and if you want to play it again, regardless of what you shoot, so that in its own right tells you what makes a great golf course if people want to continue to play it. And as uh, Jimmy uh, the tournament director here at the concessions informed us this morning and which we also learned over the course of several days playing this course that the course is laid out in such a way that you shouldn't be using driver off of most of the holes that um, maybe four holes five holes at the absolute most you should use driver otherwise you should be hitting off of the par fours and certainly the par fives with three woods or rescues and taking all the trouble out of out of play here. It's going to challenge you on every swing that you make and as you see as we go around we have a couple of short par fours in particular the eighth hole that's only from the blue tees which we consider our members tees is 312 yards long but even with a good drive that's struck properly around the center of the fairway and you're standing there with a 80 to 100 yard wedge in your hand you are very, very challenged on that second shot that gets your attention. We're standing here on the 18th tee uh, of the Concession Golf Club, and uh, as everybody knows, every great, great golf course has very, very strong finishing holes, and the Concession is no exception to that rule. This hole here is a 486-yard par 4 from the back tees. That's just a very slight dog leg to the right. There is a bunker out there on the left side that's 310 yards from the tee to reach that bunker. And there is a lake on the right-hand side of the hole that doesn't come into play off of the tee, but does come into play for your second shot. What really makes this golf course are the green complex and the bunkering, which is, the bunkering is just out of this world. He did such a fabulous job, both of them, on the bunkering of the golf course, and it actually makes the golf course the bunkering and the green complex. Mr. Nicholas said the best sand he's ever found in his career playing golf came out of northern Ohio. And so all the sand is brought in by rail and then trucked into here, and it's called pro-angle sand. And the difference in it and what sand we have here in Florida is this sand is much coarser and so it only goes down about four or five inches and it becomes a very firm base. So when you're playing a shot, your club will only go down so far and then just kind of come on up and out. It makes it much easier to play out of and it's much more consistent sand. And every year we come back in and we measure the depth of the sand in each bunker and make sure that it's the same depth throughout the bunker and it's not deeper in one part of the bunker and shallower in another. And even the bodies of water that we have on the golf course, every one of them are man-made, but every body of water looks like it's been here 100 or 200 years. As you can see, looking over this particular lake on 17, they all look like they were natural and they were formed on their own, even though they were man-made. And as you can see on the far bank over there, we have a local resident here that uh, has been here pretty much from day one and I think he likes what he has here and he's going to be with us for a while. And uh, there's a couple of birds out there that uh, you can take a look at also that are getting a little close to him but they don't seem to have any fear so he must not be hungry at this point. 
uh, of the day, so I guess they're pretty safe. Another unique feature we have here at the Concession Golf Club is our cart pass. It's uh, all this hard aggregate that I'm standing on. This is our cart pass and they're all hidden. You can see maybe 10 yards in front of you, so they're not in the edge of the fairway or in the way or are they cement where your ball would hit them and bounce 50 yards off out of bounds or something of that nature. And we do play the cart pass as they lie, the ball as it lies. So if you are on these cart pass, you play right off of them. Hi, I'm Jonathan Yarwood. I'm the uh, Director of Instruction at the Concession Golf Club. I was fortunate enough to be voted in Golf Digest Top 20 Teachers Under 40. And uh, it's great to have you here at the Concession Club. And Jonathan is local to the area for the last few years, working at the IMG Academy under David Ledbetter. Uh, he's originally from England. He still has a presence in the England full-time academy at, at one of the, the courses outside of London. Uh, Jonathan has a vision for greatness. He's worked with a lot of young students and has been very successful. We saw his track record of excellence matching where, where we wanted to go. With them being locally in town, it was convenient. We were able to put the two together, and it's, it's been a good marriage so far. But everything we do is very much tailored to the individual. So we can create a program based around your time frame, um, based around what you, you're trying to get out of, of, of the lesson. We do a lot of short game speciality stuff. So I do a lot of, of putting things uh, where I've learned a lot from Scotty Cameron over the years and different <laughs> players like that. So when we do putting, we don't just sort of give you a putting lesson and say, oh, you know, your stroke looks better. We film the ball, we film the performance of the ball, we see if there's any secret spin on it and we get the ball rolling truly and end over end. And, and all the instruction we, we do is very tailored to you. Like I don't have a method of doing anything. I don't think there should be a one size fits all approach. What I believe is that you, I just make what you do more efficient based around how you learn, how you move, how you're built. It's a very personalized and very individualized thing. We envision not just a, a residential membership as the original plan, we also envision a large national membership base, uh, a reasonably large international membership base. But we want to have enough local members where people can show up and, and find a game. They can have a partner when they want to go play. So it's going to be a nice healthy blend where you can get a tee time whenever you want. However, there's someone there to play with when, you, when you're looking for a game. Well, anyone looking for a private club in Florida has to stop here. If, if they, they'll miss the boat if they don't. Uh, give us an opportunity to show, show them what we have. Give them a tour of the clubhouse, give them a tour of the golf course, and uh, we will certainly uh, stand up to any tests they have uh, and questions that they have about quality facility, uh, professional staffs, and uh, restaurant facilities that are off the charts. And um, so we, uh, all we ask is they give us a call and stop in. Uh, we feel our biggest challenge is getting the exposure and getting people on property. When we get people on property, the first question is how do we come back? We like to play again. Uh, the next challenge is for us is to be able to get them to convert into a member. And so far we've been successful doing that. We're on the west coast of Florida. We're about 50 miles south of Tampa and about 55 miles north of Fort Myers. So we're sitting kind of right in between Fort Myers and Tampa uh, on the west coast of Florida. The Concession Golf Club in sunny Sarasota, Florida, is offering all Penn State fans attending the Outback Bowl an exclusive stay-and-play golf package. Voted Best New Private by Golf Digest, the Concession Golf Club's inviting you to get out of the cold and go and play this award-winning Jack Nicklaus signature golf course. The Concession Golf Club's Outback Bowl stay-and-play golf package. For more information, call Jimmy Wright, 941 322 1922 or visit theconcession.com.